Yellowstone supervolcano's thermal area shows inflation of over six feet, according to what the aircraft images show. This is the latest of the Caldera Chronicles that come out every week, every Monday. This is February 10th, today's article. Seeing Yellowstone in Stereo. The importance of monitoring Yellowstone's thermal area from aircraft images. We know the, the Caldera Chronicles are a weekly column, weekly column written by scientists of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This week is from R. Greg Vaughn, U.S. Geological Survey Research Scientist, and Brett Carr, U.S. Geology Survey Maidenhall Postdoctorate Fellow. And we'll see what happens when uh, we talk about the Mammoth Spring inflation. Yellowstone thermal areas are some of the most dynamic landscapes in the park, with frequent changes in not just activity, but also in the shape and the size. So how can such changes be monitored, given the large number of vast expanses of thermal areas in Yellowstone? It turns out that the digital camera and a view from the sky can do the trick. Now, we know that Yellowstone has over 60% of the world's geysers, and it says has over 10,000 geothermal areas. 10,000. And uh, the biggest geyser of the world, which has a lot of activity lately, Steamboat Geyser. Now, most like most animals, humans have, of course, two eyes, and we see, used to see together this, to, to get the sense of information about the surroundings. Because our eyes are located at different places on our heads, each eye sees objects from a slightly different point of view, resulting in two slightly different images. Our brains quickly process those two images into one. And this binocular vision gives us the ability to perceive the depths and three-dimensional structures of the world around us. Three-dimensional depths, perception that results from two eyes looking at the same scene, from different positions is called stereopsis. And it works because the apparent position of an object viewed along two different lines of sight differs based on how far away the object is from the observer. Nearby objects show a larger apparent displacement than the farther objects, and we can use this to judge distance. You can demonstrate this to yourself by looking outside. Hold your head still, close one eye, and then the other, back and forth repeatedly, and objects that are closer to you appear to move back and forth a lot. Objects that are farther away appear to move very little. While stereopsis is natural when looking at a three-dimensional scene with two eyes, it can also be simulated when looking at a two-dimensional photograph. Just as two eyes that view the world from slightly different perspectives allow us to perceive distance, two single images of the same location from different perspectives can be combined to perceive depths of objects at different distances. Stereoscopy is a method that shows two different images of the same area to each eye separately. And these images can be viewed with a stereoscope, which shows the left image to the left eye and the right image to the right eye. Some people have the ability to view stereo pair images just by changing their focus. And using this approach, it's possible to calculate distances from photographs, providing the basic data needed to make a map. If you are flying in a plane or helicopter and looking down at the Earth's surface, the tops of hills would be closer to you than the bottom of the valleys. The varying distances between different places represent Earth's topography, the shape of the land. And you'd be able to see this clearly with two eyes. We can simulate this same effect using a regular camera. If you have a series of overlapping pictures of the same area taken from slightly different positions, then you can reconstruct the topography of the surface. Using modern camera and computer technology, the technique called Structure from Motion, SFM, photogrammy does this. Now, SFM uses a series of overlapping two-dimensional images that are acquired from a moving platform, like an airplane, a helicopter, or um, an aerial system, a drone, for example, to determine the three-dimensional structure of the surface, which is called a digital elevation model, DEM. And the technique ingests hundreds, sometimes thousands, of overlapping images and automatically finds common features among the images to stitch them together 
into a seamless mosaic. Then it determines surface elevation variations based on different perspectives from each image. And with additional information about the elevation of distinct, distinct features in the area, for example, a road intersection, this process is much more quantitative than what you can determine with your eyes alone. So what does all this have to do with detecting and monitoring changes in Yellowstone? It turns out the topography of Yellowstone thermal areas changes rapidly over time. The topography changes rapidly, very fast. At Mammoth Hot Springs, for example, the travertine deposits can accumulate in a range of up to three feet every single year. In 2013, a series of digital photos over Mammoth Hot Springs was acquired from a helicopter. Many of the images overlapped, covering the same areas, but from different perspectives. In 2016, a similar series of photos was acquired using SFM, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory scientists, put, up, put all the images together into a mosaic and generated the DEMs of the lower terraces at Mammoth Hot Springs. By comparing the DEMs from 2016 and 2013, they measured how much the travertine terrace had grown. They found that surface elevation increases of up to 2 meters over 6 feet from 2013 and 16 occurred in the outflow region downslope from Pallet Spring indicating travertine growth in this area. This experiment showed that images acquired using inexpensive cameras from airborne platforms can be used to monitor surface changes in thermal areas over a variety of spatial and temporal scales. Given the importance of preserving and protecting thermal area resources, one of the mandates of Yellowstone National Park, regular aerial monitoring using SFM provides important data that might not otherwise be possible. And this is what you can see here in this image. The DEM difference, image of Mammoth Hot Springs from 2013 to 2016. And you can see the blue and the red. The red is where we have the, uh, the amount of increase. So the draped over color mosaic from September 2013, more than two meters, that's over six to six and a half feet of rise of elevation increases were detective, detected in the outflow region downslope from Pallet Springs. That's the red color that you see in about the two o'clock two position. And that says Pallet Spring up there. Okay, and this was interpreted as uh, travertine growth. The blue colors represent uh, just exit basically in the middle of the uh, area there. The blue colors represent elevation decreases between 2013 and 16. These could be places where travertine either collapsed or was partly dissolved. So that's quite a huge rise. Over, this is over three feet a year. And of course, the, uh, on to the left side of the image, you have the road with the cars that have stopped there to uh, take a view. And, and the uh, thing crossing in the middle of it um, at the um, horizontal area, it looks horizontal, that's the pathway for the visitors to go and view that area. Amazing. And of course, this, there's, there's steaming coming out from the hot springs. And this is the latest of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, Caldera Chronicles. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.